cheese, and a Canfield's diet peanut fudge soda. <laughs> yes, diet. Ten minutes? Thank you. Lover, liar, protector, betrayer. Food in its time has played all these parts. My earliest childhood memory was when I was three, and I falsely testified to a raging case of the runs in order to con my mom into giving me some of the chocolate-flavored stomach medicine she kept up in the highest kitchen cabinet way up in the ceiling. Uh, I couldn't get up there myself, so I, and I needed to have it. The goop was oily and gritty. Mutant love child of Baker's Cocoa and Vegemite with sand, but it was chocolate, and I had to have it. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Food is that way for me. I remember individual meals I had when I was five, six, nine, nineteen. Back in Albuquerque, I used to choose my friends based on whatever sumptuous sweetnesses their mothers let them have. <laughs> Becky had Swizzlers. Christina got Cocoa Krispies. Marianella got everything. She was my best friend. <laughs> restaurants, but I hate meeting them so. Oh, I haven't had a date in close to eight years, but I haven't exactly needed one. My reliable, steady Saturday night thing, my disposable, quiet, undeniable spousal equivalent is right here in front of me, or will be momentarily. That's why I expend so much energy on getting it right. And although he, you know, sometimes pleases me, you know, sometimes at home, but sometimes a restaurant has to do, or a movie theater, or my car. He's very versatile, and uh, reciprocity is never required. <laughs> Though believe me, there have been times. Uh, please, don't feel sorry for me. I'm very happy, and very clever, <laughs> if I do say so myself. You think I'm sad, you think that she's fat, so why am I smiling like a Cheshire cat? Whenever I can justify a gastronomic splurge, I drink a little of this goo and have myself a purge. I barf, it's my dark and disgusting little secret. I barf. against her sandy aluminum chopping block. The barbs of my dad's green crappie lure poking through her cheek, the flash of a Bowie night. The ritual decapitation and disembowelment. Her little severed head flops around in the bottom of the canoe, pulsing from throat to tail as she tries to suck the fog out of the air. My father holds her belly up and slits her open. He pulls her stomach out, slices it open, and said, Well, let's see what this little girlie has for breakfast. I swore that very second that I would never ingest another animal or anything made from an animal or wear anything from an animal. My life's goal is to prevent harm from coming to any living creature, either directly or indirectly, explicitly or complicitly, at the hands of a human being. I'm an anti carnolacto ovo vegetarian <laughs> I consume nor meat, nor fish, nor milk, nor milk, nor egg. I have no sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that was a joke. <laughs> three times for anti-vivisection uh, activism, though the courts call it domestic terrorism. <laughs> Semantics. <laughs> the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and Homeland Security all have files on me. I can't travel outside the country for ten years. Junior year in college, I set fire to the med school's breeding center, which supplies all the state's research facilities with genetically engineered small mammals. After I liberated the little guys, of course, and pass them out of room among my friends. Our dorm was filled with obese mice, diabetic mice, nude mice, nude rats, baby rabbits, fortune chills, three spider mites, and a baboon named Bobo. We had the noisiest dorm on campus. Now, I'm the managing editor of Meat is Murder Monthly. <laughs> you know, given my politics, I don't have any idea why I chose my current living situation. I must have been high. apartment is a pigsty and I've got a guy coming at seven. A lawyer named Marvin. He's a bit of a nebbish, but his company's going public and he has no sense of ethics whatsoever. Amazingly high GEP. Growth earning potential. I know, it's far from PC, but so am I. A girl has to look out for her own, realistically. And I'm all for realistically. If Marvin likes the meal I'm about to make him, he's mine. You know, my mother always used to say, Mindy, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Via the Kreplach and the Kanish. A good matzo ball soup can melt the sternest chicks a loving heart in the corporate gene pool. Bacon is my mother's version of the morning after pill. It keeps them around the morning after. <laughs> Not very kosher, but really. <laughs> I am not many years married, and if at least 2.4 children have not squozen themselves out of my loins, I will quietly tape up the doors and windows in the kitchen, light a yachtside candle, and turn on the oven. Of course, sometime before then, I'll have to refit the place with gas. But... <laughs> hey, don't look at me like that. I'm not being maudlin, I'm being realistic. My mother and I used to play a game. Jonestown Easy Bake Bake Off. She'd say, <laughs> Mindy, this is always better than facing the shame of spinsterhood. Don't worry. Everyone will understand, and even applaud you. And we practice. Up and down and in and out, and up and down and in and out. Woo! It was the first exercise I ever learned. But staying single, it's just not gonna happen. Men are shocked by how much I eat, but the calories don't get near my seat. I match them bite for bite, yes I eat what's on my plate, Shove my fingers down my throat and regurgitate. I barf. It's my weird and wicked little secret. I barf. It's a trick I learned. 
My naughty secret, I barf. No one knows that my housemates know their stairs to bed too. I keep my own indiscretion on the down low, but I know that they don't know that.